Yo, what's good everyone? How is life? It's Owen oh, Tanuki here making a basic Judy Street Fighter 6 guys. Now you have to bear with me, this is my first time doing anything like this. You have to bear with the mic because the mic sucks. But yeah, just gonna do my best to try and make a video to help anyone who wants to play this character or understand how to play against this character kind of. Just detailing a, a basic game plan. Uh, things that you can do with it, down, right down to the simple stuff like which buttons are special cancelable and then what to do from there. And just before I really get into just the guide in general, I gotta preface, I'm no fighting game pro. I've never competed at a pro level. I'm not an absolute savant of knowledge of this genre of game. And this is also my first Street Fighter game. So by no means is this a guide from a pro. But it's what I've learned so far, going from Silver to Plat 1 and just grinding ranked online, only playing this character. I certainly have a lot of bad habits, but at least in the, for a, a 101 guide, if I was to pick up this character and get started in the early stages, I'm pretty confident I have a grasp of that. So, with all that out of the way, like and subscribe if you want to see more. Let's get into the guide. Judy has the simple yet effective game plan of getting in your face and fucking your shit up. This character is a rushdown character, make no mistake about it. She has a projectile, so she doesn't have one at all, but as you can clearly tell if you play this game, it's nowhere near as oppressive as many other projectiles from characters like Guy or Ryu or Ken. It's, it's certainly not her game, that's not what she's about. She's about getting in your face, avoiding the obstacles that the opponent puts in their way, getting in your face, Getting within poking range and then just going crazy. Got lots of good push range, lots of good pokes for, pokes for drive rush conversions. Got the low here with and the overhead as well, which is I think it's like plus two or some shit. Plus two. Lots of plus frames up close. Going in for throws as well. And very good buttons that are special kinds of ball, not super committal, so you can base out drive rush and, and reverse on somebody else's uh, drive impact, should I say, and reverse somebody else's drive impact. So overall, as I say, this is a rushdown character. You've got to get in your opponent's face, avoid projectiles. It's, it's more often than not, it's going to be somebody turtling off against you. You're not going to be the one turtling. You're going to be the one closing distance, having to avoid projectiles, get around people trying to avoid you and backing them into the corner. So, after introducing Judy's game plan to get up close and personal, and that being where she's most deadly, one would rightly ask, well, how do I actually get in? Especially in this game where there's a lot of characters, Ken, Ryu and Guile immediately come to mind, amongst others. You are very good at shelling up, have good projectiles, good DPs they can use to react to your jumps. How do I get in on these characters? Well, first and best bit of advice I can give anyone watching this video playing this character or any character really in this game is patience. It's a simple one, but this game is not like Guilty Gear Strive. You're not just constantly dashing full screen, jumping over projectiles, this, that, the other, slipping under buttons, that's not happening in this game. So, first bit of advice I can give really is just practice patience. But now let's get on to the actual buttons and things that you can do. I haven't labbed it so I can't compare Julie to the rest of the cast, but her walk speed feels relatively fast and her dash covers a lot of distance, as you can see. So, when it comes to a character who's tailing up and just sort of chicken blocking and running away from you, you can close the distance even just by walking forward. A lot of characters, if not maybe even all characters, I haven't tested this, are not going to be able to get away from you if you just walk forward, let alone dash. So, in the situation that somebody is walking away, jumping away, not really trying to engage with you, just walking forward or dashing forward is going to close that distance and at some point they're going to have to land, stop jumping, jump over you, press a button, they're going to have to do something because at some point you're going to get close enough to make them commit or punish them for jumping in the first place. So yeah, Joey's walk speed and her run speed are both reliable ways to begin to close the distance on your opponent and force them to make a different decision or punish them for the decisions that they do make. That's if that opponent is not spamming projectiles, like Guile. Guile, he's definitely Judy's mortal enemy in this game, just makes it incredibly difficult to get in and get to where you want to be, and even at this range, he can be really, he, 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 can, he, can, he can scrap a little bit with Judy and, and, you know, mash a little bit, but once you get in, as is the case with Judy, you know, a lot of good buttons, a lot of plus frames, getting for the throw, he can struggle. 
Right, so you guys have to pardon me with how I showcase this. I'll do the best I can, but fuck me. I've been messing with this for the last 45 minutes to an hour. And for the life of me, I cannot get Guile to just shoot projectiles at me if I jump. He constantly fucks the buttons up. If I just if I just walk, he'll fire him and he'll do he'll, you know, we'll go about our business. But if I jump, it just fucks the CPU up. I don't know if I'm a street fighter noob and there's some fucking law behind this, but I just cannot get it to do what I want it to do. So bear with me. You playing jury as the rushdown character are gonna more than not, more often than not find yourself in a situation where this is what you're playing against. Now keep in mind this is a bot, they're not gonna move, and as I said earlier, I'm having tr I'm having troubles replicating this exactly how I want it to be. A real guy player is gonna continue moving backwards as he's firing the projectiles. As you get closer, he's gonna flash kick or he's gonna he might drive impact, something. He's gonna do something different, but overall the game that you're gonna be playing is closing distance and getting closer to him as he fires these projectiles. There's quite a few options of which you can do to do that. One of them being Judy's Fuha kick. We'll go over why this is so important a bit more later, but just know that stocking these, you can stock up to three at once, allows Judy to both link her some of her special moves together and also change the properties, which we'll go over later. But to ensure that you can stock these up, you do the lightest option, the back quarterback circle X, as it's mapped for me, and that can deflect a single hitting projectile, such as these. If Guile EXs his projectile, which I believe makes it multi-hit, it will go through you and the second hit will hit you. You'll still get one Fuha, but you'll take damage. It's not worth it. So yeah, any single hitting projectile, Judy can deflect them. Of course, in a real game, the Guile player may fire projectiles at different speeds. So you've got to be careful and be ready. If you Mainly this is at full screen or slightly less than full screen. If you're this close, it's probably not a good idea. So use it sparingly and you know you can do it. There's definitely no reason not to, as you can charge a full height, you can charge all the way up to three if you want to, if they're spamming, and then you can start to close the distance so that when you get your poke, you can convert it into some nice damage. Another option that you have at your disposal to close distance with jury against characters with strong projectile games is to parry. So, if you've noticed, when I've been getting hit by these projectiles before, on block, I take no damage, but I am losing drive bar. Now, it's not a massive issue at this point because I haven't, I've got basically on my bar. But in another situation around where maybe, maybe you've just done a combo, you've just knocked them away, and in the firing projectiles, you could be on lower drive and it could be a risk, so keep that in mind. But if you parry, although you will waste a little bit of drive bar to activate the parry, providing you block the projectile within a short amount of time, you will recover that drive bar. And you'll basically lose nothing. Of course, if you get the perfect parry, you'll lose basically almost literally nothing. But the reason why I preface block blocking it within a certain amount of time is because if you make a wrong read, thinking that the guard player will spam and you pop it, you've wasted drive bar already. Now, let's say you make the right read and he does fire it, but you hold it for a while. As you can see, your drive reduces as you hold the parry. So even though it'll be small amounts, you'll be wasting just a tad bit extra drive whilst you wait for that projectile. But if you time it well enough, you can parry, walk, parry, walk, parry, walk. Now, again, as I said, this is a bot, the guard player will move, but this will stop you from taking dry, the too much drive chip damage and keeping your drive bar nice and high, as well as allowing you to continue to progress and get closer to the play. I've left the jumping options here separate because, as I mentioned earlier, I cannot for the life of me get this to work. So of course, one thing you could just do is forward jump over a projectile and continue to close the distance that way. At full screen, this is this is viable, this is fine, it covers a lot of distance, you avoid the projectile, you don't lose any drive bar, etc, etc, you can cover that distance. What you've got to be careful of is the other player's DP once you get close. Now, I'm struggling to replicate this in training mode, I'm going to try and get an example of it going now, but at least from full screen, from this distance, forward jumping is fine. You're going to cover a lot of distance and you'll get close to your opponent. I can't replicate it exactly how I want to show it because for some reason, for the life of me, I cannot get it to work in training mode. But as I was saying before, with the forward jump from about full screen, you're safe. Nothing's going to happen to you. You avoid the projectile. When you start to get mid-range here, this is where forward jumping becomes a dangerous option. 
if you don't time it properly, you're going to get hit by a DP from the player who's who's tailing up, as you'll see here. I got flash hit by a guy. I avoided the projectile, but he's still in a position to be able to punish me, uh, given the timing of my jump over his projectile. Now, let's just say you read it and you react perfectly. You probably will land in time for a punish. But this is this is you being ready on the ball. It's that speed of projectile. You might do a fast one. You might do a slow one. There's there's so much variety there. But as a general rule of thumb, when you're this close. You've got to react to a projectile instantly to get a punish, and even then, you're risking it. So at this range, forward jump might not be the wisest idea. Use it at your own discretion, but it might not be the wisest idea. Another option Judy does have, though, is one of her special moves. No idea what it's called. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! <laughs> so, for the purpose of the video, let's have a look. Sen. So this move, the uh, quarter circle back and whatever button the car it's to for your your inputs, might be an X circle or R1, a fucking neutral and get in and get a punish on your opponent if you time it correctly. Now in a game it's gonna be a bit harder to do as you know you, you play neutral, there's a lot more thought to it than replicating it with a bot. But if you time it right, you can get a nice easy punish. Um with the uh, Shikisen when somebody spamming projectiles on you. Again, if you time it wrong though, you're more than likely gonna get flash kicked. So it's still an option you have to be careful with. As well as that, Judy can EX this move. For some reason that just scuffed the, uh, the landing. Judy can EX this move and get a pretty decent chunk of damage out of it. You can also cancel that into level one super. If you need that to win the round, you can cancel it into level three super if you need that to win the round. So. You have a variety of options just from that one special move, amongst the other options for closing down, people tailing up as we've already gone over. Another option that you have at your disposal to close distance with Jury against characters with strong projectile games is to parry. So, if you've noticed, when I've been getting hit by these projectiles before, on block, I take no damage, but I am losing drive bar. Now, it's not a massive issue at this point because I haven't, I've got basically on my bar. But in another situation around where maybe, maybe you've just done a combo, you've just knocked them away, and in the firing projectiles you could be on lower drive and it could be a risk, so keep that in mind. But if you parry, although you will waste a little bit of drive bar to activate the parry, providing you block the projectile within a short amount of time, you will recover that drive bar. And you'll basically lose nothing. Of course, if you get the perfect parry, you lose basically almost literally nothing. But the reason why I prefaced block blocking it within a certain amount of time is because if you make a wrong read, thinking that the guard player will spam and you pop it, you've wasted drive bar already. Now, let's say you make the right read and he does fire it, but you hold it for a while. As you can see, your drive reduces as you hold the parry. So even though it'll be small amounts, you'll be wasting just a tad bit extra drive whilst you wait for that projectile. If you time it well enough, you can parry, walk, parry, walk, parry, walk. Now, again, as I said, this is a bot, the guard player will move, but well, this will stop you from taking dry, the too much drive chip damage and keeping your drive bar nice and high, as well as allowing you to continue to progress and get closer to the player. The final two options I'll show you to close distance uh, with this character are coupled together as they're both relatively simple and don't really need much explaining. The first one being just block. I know it's boring, I don't do it either, but just block. Are you serious? Just block and slowly close the distance until you get into poking range and then you can try and press a button and get your combo. It's the boring way, a lot of people aren't going to be disciplined enough to do that, but it's effective, it can work. And now again, this is just a bot, it's not going to be this easy in a game, but blocking is always good. <laughs> so block. The second option, if you're a little bit of a, a risky geezer and you like living life on the edge, 
It's, you know, one of the beautiful things about Street Fighter 6 is it endorses crack cocaine gameplay. So if you just think, fuck you neutral and fuck you guile, you've got the beautiful and wonderful drive impact that you can always spend whenever you want, whenever you like. An absolute phenomenal tool that says fuck you to any and all projectiles. It's likely, I don't know if Guile's um, EX projectile is multi-hitting, well it is multi-hitting, but I don't know if it's more than two, because two hits break your drive impact armor. So if it's a regular projectile, yes, you can drive impact through it. However, it's not really that likely that people are going to be dip projectile at this range. And as you saw there, if your timing isn't absolutely spot on, you're not going to hit them. They'll recover in time. So this is more of a fuck you, crazy option. It's not reliable. It's not going to work all the time. Most of the time, people throwing projectiles at you, it's going to be from here. You're not going to hit anything. But if you react and you want a guaranteed punish, if you can time it properly in somebody's face, you're spamming projectiles, you do have the option of drive impact. It will work. It just depends on your timing and the tendencies of your opponent. So use that at your own discretion. To summarize on the options that Judy has to close down on her opponent, you've got walking and dashing, which again, as I've said before, her walk speed is relatively fast, and her dash speed, cover, her dash covers a lot of distance. Secondly, you've got neutral or forward jumping over the projectiles so that you don't take them. But again, keep in mind, when you jump over projectiles, particularly with forward jump, if you're in this mid range here and you forward jump, you're likely gonna get DP'd. So neutral jump is kind of okay, depending on the arc of the DP. Gal's super kick is quite a flash kick, should I say. Has quite the arc on it, so it still might hit you, hit you if you're not careful. But um, neutral jumping and forward jumping are good at full screen. Once you get to about this point, you need to ke be careful with the timing as to how you do that. Sometimes you might be able to get, might be able to get a punish, but if you miss time it, you may avoid the projectile, but still eat the DP. Next, you have Shikusen, which, as I said before, is a good fuck you neutral tool and will get you across the screen, but only use it for a straight punish if someone's fired a projectile and you're in the air and you know you can punish them, or if you've made the read, because it's death on block, whether you exit or not. If you don't, if you, if you just throw this out there, you're going to die for doing it on block, so it's not worth it. It's not going to work out for you. Then you've got block or use the Fuha kick, so block and just keep progressing distance. As I said before, this is a bot, a real guy player will be walking backwards, possibly threatening to jump over you or drive impacting. This is a base level of understanding, progressing forward, blocking the projectile and continuing to block it until you get into poking range and then you press your button. For Judy as well, stocking the Fuha is important as we'll go over at another point in this video. So you could also deflect the projectiles with her Fuha kick just simply to stock. Keep in mind, the Fuha will only deflect a projectile that's a single hit projectile. If it's multi-hit, it will carry on and it will hit you. And finally, for all you crackhead gamers out there, trust me, I'm one of them, you've got drive impacts. It takes some timing, it's probably going to come, have to come off a hard read, and someone's going to have to be stupid enough to do a projectile at this distance. But if you can time it, you'll get a free combo, free bit of damage, only one drive bar, it's fine. If you can do it, if it happens, if it works out for you, it works out. You know, sometimes you just can't complain. You gotta take what you're given. So yeah, those are the options Judy has to close distance. Okay, so we've been through overall how to close the distance with Judy and establishing Judy's game plan of being a rushdown character and wanting to get in and fuck your shit up. Now for probably what everyone is most interested in, you know, at the base layer, combos what to do once you actually get the hit. As I touched on before, Judy has a special move called Fuhajin, which allows that she can do it anywhere, she can do it on hit, and she has it in three different variations. You have the light, the medium, and the heavy version. These, as you can see uh, with the bottom of Yuri's legs, has the glowing pink and, or purple, and the just under the, my health bar on the top left, I can stock these up to three times. And this allows for these special moves, which otherwise cannot combo into each other, to be able to do just that. Gives you a lot more combo diversity and allows you to get a lot more damage when you have these stocked, just almost from any poke, if you can hit confirm it. So, in the early stages for Judy in the round, both doing this raw when you've got space is good, and finishing combos in this and possibly something else whatever it may be 
is also good because you need these Fuha stocks to then cash out big time later in the round when you've got more super bar and you want to you want to go for a big conversion. Also, to keep noted, each time you spend one, it spends a Fuha stock. But if you EX it, if you uh, burn bar, if you burn drive gauge on your special move, it saves the first stock. But your next one will spend. So again, if you have one stock and you spend the bar, it will save the first stock. A key thing to note with Judy is her three special moves used previously have different properties to them, depending on if she does or doesn't have a Fuha stocked. It changes some frame data, uh, which in some situations will help you, in others it won't. To use this example to start with, if you have no Fuha and you do this move, you're minus 10 on block, you're dead. If you have, if you have a Fuha stocked and you use this move, you're still minus 10 on block and you're dead. So in some situations, just because you have a few hours stocked, it doesn't mean it's gonna save you. This one's minus three. The projectile itself, I think is plus. It's massively plus. But the kick itself, if you're gonna use it at that range on a combo string, is minus three. You might get away with it if somebody's sleeping, but it's dangerous. And then this one, minus 12. It's death on block. So it's not gonna help you. On block, that is. The low might catch somebody sleeping, so at times online I tend to do things like this, but particularly when I spend the bar, I wouldn't usually do this without spending the bar too often, but you can space yourself out and kind of get away with it and catch somebody sleeping. You might even hit them, but usually if I'm going to go for that, I'll spend the bar because uh, I won't believe in it if I can actually get myself to do it. As you can see, it's slightly less safe because I've spent the bar. But it, 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 just keep it in mind, if you're doing a combo string, you can catch people sleeping with this, but don't get used to it. With a Fuha stocked as well, also. Doing it raw with that one is a terrible idea. But with a Fuha stocked, you can kind of get away with this, but you only would usually do it if you've committed to this and not hit confirm properly and are trying to get yourself out of trouble. If you hit confirm properly, you can get really nice damage for absolutely no drive bar. This is fantastic for Judy. It allows her to essentially, as well as all the, all, all the conversions pretty much having really good corner carry, it allows her to get nice, easy damage and set up for the next one in which she'll then maybe spend some drive and maybe convert into super or whatever it is that she decides to do. But your Fuhas being stocked allow for you to get nice, easy conversions and easy damage uh, where you otherwise wouldn't. From there, her Fuhas also allow her to get some really big combos where she can cancel into super quite nicely and do a really big chunk of damage. As I said, they also change of properties. So without a Fuha, so if you to combo into this move, yes, you're plus three, so you kind of have a little bit of wiggle room what you want to do here, nothing will combo. But when you have a few high stocks, this can combo into a multitude of moves of which you can continue to combo with. That was wrong, but something like that. Or if you want to commit and spend some drive, that also works. Or if you want to cancel into level three super from there, that also works if you can get the buttons out quick enough. There's a multitude of options that the Fuha stocks allow you to go into with this character. That's why, especially in the early phases of the round, I say, and pretty much throughout the entire round and the entire game, you're constantly going to want to be stocking these up. So sometimes when you get a hit confirm, you're going to accept the fact that you're not going to get as much damage and just spam the stock. And just allow yourself to build up your stocks ready to cash out. It should be noted that Judy's Fuha gene on block is a pretty bad idea. You're probably going to get punished most of the time. But right here I'm doing it raw, it makes it very easy to see that it's unsafe. But the way you'll be spacing it in your games, if you use these pokes properly and space them well enough, you can pretty much automatically cancel into Judy's medium version of the Fuha gene and you'll be safe 99% of the time. Because if you space it well enough, people shouldn't be able to poke you out of it. 
and again on cancel as well that forward step allows it to be a frame tie to a string so you don't really want to be using the light version it won't cover the distance it can and as you can see it can work but more often than not you're going to be using the heavy version but the heavy version relies on you spacing it properly or else you're going to get punished another note about judy's foot hygiene is the heavy version is a frame trap off this button <laughs> I didn't know of, of how many things it was a frame trap, but of this button, it's a frame trap at any range. So if anybody mashes anything outside of like EX, DP or drive impact, they're going to get hit. And from a heavy, you can also combo into a DP. Yeah, the heavy version of a DP. So yeah, keep in, uh, keep in mind that through hygiene on block, most of the time is going to be unsafe unless you space it right off a, nor off a normal, which you'll also require to space correctly when you go into the fuel hygiene. But a heavy fuel hygiene can be a frame trap, but only off this button. This right here is also a frame trap. However, as I showed earlier, this on block is death. So this really is just going to be luck of the draw. If this happens for you, you're lucky. Judy's, Judy's heavy kick into the special, into the quarter circle puller special is a frame trap. But of course, if they drive impact or EXDP or super, you're fucked. So it's not great, but it's something to know. I'll probably do a separate video just with raw combos with no commentary or very little commentary because this is my first time doing this, so it's probably very scuffed. I'll probably repeat myself loads of times and just describe things terribly. But what I'll show you now are the buttons that you'll be pressing in neutral with Judy, what special cancelable, what you're going to be relying on, etc. etc. So from this sort of mid-range or just in between the mid-range here, you're going to be using standing heavy punch, which is special cancelable. Uh, Crouching medium punch, which is also special cancelable, and crouching medium kick, which is also special cancelable. These are your main buttons that be, you'll be looking to hit confirm off to cover this space. You'll be looking to hit any of the, particularly this one being a low. Most of them, all of them have got relatively decent start of frames. Maybe things are a little slow, but it, is, it has got significantly, uh, it's got really good range, shows why. But this button starts up in eight frames, it's relatively solid, plus one on block, but you're not really gonna be much bothered about that. You're more than often gonna be cancelling this into dry brush or just automatically going into medium fuha. This one is plus five on block, it's a great button. It's also quite a decent anti-air. It starts up in six frames, it's got decent range. Again, if you space this properly, you can pretty much cancel onto medium fuha, you'll always be safe. It's a good button. Another button you'll probably cancel into dry brush to get a combo and do some damage. This one is the same. Decent hit confirm button. Combos into this special move. I think combos into all of the, the kicks actually by the low unless you're close enough, but you'll, you'll just never do that. But yeah, this is also good range. Combos into this. Gives you good combo structure when you have a full ass stock because you can combo in that way. And um, yeah, great button all around. From this medium range, these are the three buttons you'll be using. Crouching medium, medium kick, crouching medium punch, standing heavy punch. Now it is to be noted that to scrap in this mid-range, you can use your jab and your your, your standing light punch and your standing uh, uh, light kick. These are a lot harder to hit confirm off, but in this range, you can do things like this and go into um, quarter circle forward, light punch, Judy's a special move, or hit confirms like this. But I'm showing you this now in training mode. I'm certainly not good enough a player to do this yet. I do not do this consistently. Most I'll be mashing this into that, but you won't catch me doing stuff like this really regularly. However, again, you can scrap with these buttons in the neutral. As you see, it's plus two on hit. This is plus five on hit. You know, you can scrap with these in neutral if you're confident to do so, but you're not going to get the greatest combos out of these. You're not going to be able to drive rush convert off of these. It's not happening. Usually you'd use these to scrap. Maybe just, again, try to cancel into the medium heavy. It's not. Um, it's not frame tight. This is frame tight. The light fuha, but the medium heavy is not, uh, or the medium fuha is not. So we've been over that Judy is a rushdown character, and that you know a lot of her game plan is going to be getting in. But what happens when you get to this point here? 
not close enough to hit the opponent with these neutral with these buttons that we've spoken about that we'll be especially cancelling into and getting our combos off but here we're just out of range judy fortunately has a godsend of a button neutral heavy a neutral heavy kick should i say absolute beast of a button that it's got 17 frames isn't the absolute quickest but with its forward with how it, with it, english with how it carries a forward it's a great button it allows us to uh, traverse that distance which she can't reach with the bunch that she wants the special counterable and if you hit it more often than not you're going to be in range for your next button to be special counterable and as you see you're plus two on block it's not humongous it's not giga plus frames but it's enough to sort of enforce your game plan also on block with good spacing which is what you want to be doing because you don't want to be doing this button in the opponent's face with good spacing this button is plus as fuck so again when you pretty much hit it from max range on hit you're going to be in range for your not always but pretty much from max range you're going to be in range for the normals that you want to special cancel out of after you've hit um the neutral heavy kick again as, I, as you show as you saw earlier at max max range you're going to be a little bit out but you're still plus two so you can still step in and, and, and play it again. Or you could just do it again. You know what I mean? You can just do it again. It's a good move. Obviously, this is not a special counterable, so you've got to be careful with drive impact. But its recovery is not terrible. So if you're fortunate with the time and you can recover in time and then drive impact back. Again on block, it's mega plus. So if you catch someone mashing and you space it right, you can get a punish. The other button you'll be relying on for Judy in this range where you just have reach for your special cancel buttons is neutral medium kick. This button is also godlike. It starts up in five frames. It's an absolute beast. It's actually a two-hit kick, but you don't want to be using it at this range, to be honest. It's it's not that good. Um, I believe it's death on block. I know, it's plus three on block, so you'll be all right, but the, the, you don't want to be using that way. You don't want to better buttons than that. But it can be used that way. But this button is going to be sort of battling for this space where you're kind of out of range and your opponent's mashing lows so that you can't walk into range. And you sort of you throw this out as well as this, but you throw this out as well with it being so fast. It constantly stuffs the opponent's buttons. You might trade, but a lot of times you can stuff opponent's lows like this by using this button to neutral medium kick and stop them from mashing so that you can creep in just a little bit more and get here so you can land these buttons. It just allows you to sort of establish that pressure and stop a bit of mash and either they're going to sit still and you can get to do what you want or they're going to jump and then you can punish that, maybe they'll drive impact but long story short it allows you to slowly creep in, creep in, creep in until you get to where you want. So just to show a quick example of that, I've got Blanca to mash a bunch of low hitting buttons or mid hitting buttons after I hit him and all I'm going to do is spam neutral medium kick now it wouldn't work like this in a match because it's likely not guaranteed but it's likely that after crushing a low or two the other player is going to stop pressing buttons so after I hit him maybe once or twice and crush his lows he's going to stop pressing buttons and that's going to allow me to wiggle into here but just to demonstrate most of the time depending on what Blanca's, Blanca's buttons are, which I'm really not familiar with. But most of the time, I'm going to win the trade. If we even trade, I'm going to crush his, I'm going to crush his buttons. And again, the, uh, the thesis behind doing this is to stop him from mashing so he stops pressing buttons. Of course, a real player might jump or might drive impact, but predominantly, better players are likely going to stop mashing here and just sort of wait and see what happens next. Of course, you can use this move as well, depending on timing and what comes out. As you see, I didn't get it off there, but I got it there. It simply depends on what the opponent's doing, but as with both of these moves, it's simply to stop people from mashing. This, especially this one, because it comes out so it starts up so quickly, it can stop a lot of mash and make people stop mashing and sit still, which allows you to get here and then get what you really want. I notice as I go through these recordings, I don't know how many I'm going to leave in here because it's just going to take forever to redo everything. But I keep saying plus on block when I mean on hit. So whenever you hear that, you just, you know, use your own intuition. You can decide, you know, which is which. But leading on from that, the last button I'm going to show you for Judy's offense is only uh, used when you're right on top of the opponent. It's forward medium kick. It's an overhead 
21 frames a star, it's relatively decent. It's plus two on hit, not on block. It's plus two on hit. It's got pretty decent range, but you're not going to want to be using it like that, really. Like, you've got better buttons from these ranges. This is only when you're right on top of the opponent's head. Plus two on hit. Leaves you a little bit of room to mash on your opponent just in case they try and jump to get out. Also, to, to bail out a drive rush, if you mash and they drive rush, you can drive rush them back. Or, you can walk up and throw. From my experiences online, nobody's really blocking this all the time. It's not to say it's guaranteed, but nobody's blocking this consistently. Especially with um, Judy's threat of the slow, which can lead into so much for her, or just a full off stock. Most people are not blocking this. That's not to say that it's free though. Again, depending on the style of the player that you're playing against, if they're mashing a lot, you aren't going to be able to get this very often. If they wake up jumping, if they're constantly back walking, if they're just not, you know, if they're mashing, if they're just a bit crazy, you ain't getting this. It's not that powerful of a tool. But if you can condition a player to sort of sit still a bit more and stop pressing so many buttons, then it does become more of a powerful tool and you can sort of be really cheeky, go for an overhead, a jab into another overhead, or you can go for an overhead straight into a throw. This, this overhead into jab into overhead into throw, I've done this plenty of times online. It's worked plenty of times, it's got me fucking killed plenty of times. So don't take it as gospel. It's not the absolute greatest move, but it is usable. And again, if you can condition your opponent, it's a move that can get you, you know, a little bit of free damage, a throw, some separation, and some... Yeah, I just had to check this. It's minus three on block. You're not getting punished for this. However, it is a 43 frame move in total. So, you know, it takes a while to recover from. Definitely more than enough time for somebody to use the big bad, the drive impact, and fuck you up for it. So again, it's really a situational move where if you know your opponent's not going to drive impact and they're kind of sitting still, this is something to go for. But if they're a crackhead, as many players are online, you've got to be careful and not go for this. Two more buttons that you'll be using in the close range with duty are neutral medium punch, plus two on block as you see, and forward medium punch. Both of these are special cancelable. Um, again, with the range, the so close range, you'll only use the light kick here because you'll tend not to, uh, the light for hitting kick, because you'll tend not to get punished for these uh, if you use the light, whereas if you use the medium, because of the instep, you'll likely take a whack for doing that. So keep that in mind, finish with the light, foo harder, and you'll, you won't get punished. Um, but as you can see, this one, minus two on block, but with the range, you're not going to get punished anyway. This one, plus two on block, you're definitely not getting punished. On hit, however, when I find it. Again, this move being special cancelable, it's plus four on block, but you'll be, you, you won't be uh, angling for any type of combo like this without it being punished counter. So you'll be, com you'll be uh, comboing this into the full heart yourself. I thought that was wrong. Combo this into the full heart or this kick in general. I don't really use this in neutral to be honest, it's a decent button but I really don't use it outside of um, combos when I hit confirm into this, but it is a decent button nonetheless. This button though I definitely do use, because on hit this button combos into this button, uh, giving your timing, so neutral medium punch into crouching medium punch gives you that combo and then from that combo you can go into the, the medium fuha. And of course from this combo if you wanted to, you could spend drive bar, there's a lot of things you could do um, with this combo, so I definitely use this button a lot when I get round top of somebody's toes. It's a great button, again as I say, you can drive impact into it, it's plus as fuck when you do, which allows for easy combos, plus 11 off the drive impact hit, you can pretty much go into anything from there, get some nice damage into a Fuha ender. Now I'll be showing you the best buttons to press with Judy off drive rush. I haven't labbed this thing to the rest of the cast, but I'm pretty sure Judy has got one of the longest range drive rushes in the game, basically full screen. So one of the absolute best ones to be pressing off this is a crouching medium kick. I don't know how you time it off the run, you can get a little bit of a skate animation, which can carry you into range. And as you can see, when you hit it, it is plus five on, on hit. And although I'm not necessarily skilled enough to do this, because I've definitely never done it in a game, I would usually just commit into the Fuha. You can do, that's what I would usually do right there, but it's kind of risky. What you can do is, if you hit confirm it, you can go into standing light kick, and then go into the, um, the quarter circle forward punch, light punch special. You could also probably go into the light Fuha, which we'll try right now. You can't, right then. Maybe it depends on spacing. 
No, you can't. So your only combo here, off this, if you're not just going to automatically cancel into the medium fuha, is standing line kick into quarter circle forward special. Like this, if I can actually do it. It's kind of hard, but I've never done this in a game. But there is one option available to you. Off drive rush into crouching medium kick. A very good poke off drive rush. The next button off drive rush is a button we've already discussed as being a god button. It is standing medium kick. You don't need both hits off this, although if you get them you can still combo, as it's plus seven on hit. So whether you get both hits or whether you get one, basically at all ranges, I think I think you could maybe space it out and miss like at the absolute max range. But at all ranges, um, drive rush, standing medium kick into crouching uh, medium punch will always combo. It will always, always, always combo, as I say, maybe outside of max range, but I can't even replicate it, so. Max, match range, you can throw this out there and combo easily into crouching medium punch, and as we've already established, from there, you can go Fuha, or into um, into the kicks, or whatever you choose to do from there. But yeah, drag rush into neutral medium kick is so good. This is unbelievably strong. Now this button off drive rush is way more riskier against mashy opponents. You're never doing this, but raw drive rush into uh, forward medium kick into the overhead is plus six. Now, normally it's plus two, which means you're not comboing into anything. You kind of have a little bit of a tit for tat RPS game here. But if you land it off the drive rush, it's plus six, which means you get easy combos. If you mind not blocking, please can, all of a sudden. You get easy combos. Oh, oh sorry. Easy combo into Fuha. Easy combo into the kicks. If you already had a, some Fuha stocked, you could go. And if that comboed. Get some nice damage. But again, this is really a, a conditioning type of drive push button, you're not going to get this against players who mash. A lot of good players are going to react and press buttons like this for their character that's going to stop you from running in this space. But if you can get it off against plus six, even more mind games when it comes to just going for the throw instead. But yeah, it's plus six. It definitely gives you some... Uh, oh, and one more. I kind of forgot this one. You can just drive push and throw. I mean, that is a thing too. You know, sort of from these sort of mid-ranges. Maybe not this close, but ever so slightly, like maybe here. You can just drive rush and throw. Again, this is prone to mash because you know, you're not covering yourself with a button. But if you know you can get in, drive rush and throw is an option. Another little thing that uh, if you're learning how to play this character, you should absolutely know is that I believe basically every character in this game has throw loops. Obviously, Geordie being one of them. All you have to do is throw, dash up, and in time, grab again, and you'll get your throw loops, of course. You can see if you miss time it, you get poked out. But I think every character in this game has a throw loop, and this is literally Jory's. All you've got to do is dash up and grab. And if your timing is right, you won't get poked out of it. If your timing is wrong, like mine there, you will. That doesn't mean that this is just a guaranteed throw loop and nobody can get out. Of course, if they can, neutral jumps, you can get out. If you get XDPs, you'll punish me. If you drive, mind you, if you drive in pikes, I'll grab him. But there's other things you could level through super. There are other things that Ken can do here to get out of the corner. But just know that if your opponent is mashing and you throw them in the corner, you have a throw loop providing they keep mashing. If they do anything else like EXDP, super, neutral jump, you're in trouble. But this is definitely something you can go for for sort of a guaranteed extra throw. It happens a lot. I land this a lot. Okay, so now that we've gone over the um, basic combo structure and drive brush buttons that you could extra extrapolate for sure, I'll probably make a separate video of just combos so you can see how diverse Judy's roots can get on her combos and what she can do and just the big damage ones really, which is what everyone wants to see. Now I'll show you Judy's supers. As every character does in this game, she has three supers, she has a level one. Level 2, which is an install state, which is going to need its own part. 
and a level 3, which you've probably seen in the promotional trailers for this. So, starting with level 1. To my knowledge, there are only three ways to combo into this super. One of them being EX uh, Shikisen. If I can get it. So you do the level 1 as a landing. If you time it really well, you can. I think you can land every single hit of the level 1. But you're at risk of dropping them, as I just did. So you just cut sort of buffer the input map by mashing it and then time it as they land. There you go. That's one way to land it. Another way to land it is off Judy's heavy Fuhajin. That's way number two to land it. Oh, and also it does extra damage if you do it with a Fuha stock. It doesn't matter if you have three, as long as you have one, it will do a bit extra damage. The third way you can combo it, to my knowledge, is like this. Off this kick special when you have a Fuha stocked. If you do it with that one, it won't combo. But if you do it with one, if you can be quick enough, if you can be quick enough, it will combo, as you can see. The original super does six hits, that is seven. I'll show again. So just real quick, off Heavy Fuhajin, you can combo level 1, off this special, with a bar of um, with, with a Fuha stock, you can combo it, and off EX, Shikisen. And with good timing, you can land every hit. Now Judy's level 3 super, um, you can basically combo into this off any button, though you wouldn't unless it was absolutely necessary. If you're trying to steal around, you can just go like that. Again, why? Uh, why would you do this? I'm just saying this for the point so that you know that if that's what you're going to do, if that's what's necessary and you're aiming for this, it is possible. You just got to be really quick on the buttons. But as I say, you can basically combo this into anything. So any of the Fuha kicks can also combo into this. You've just got to be quick enough at getting the buttons out. Light, medium, or heavy, they can all combo into this. Um, even Judy's level one, not level one, even Judy with no Fuha can combo into this kick uh, on Super, providing you're quick enough. She can combo off no Fuha, this version of the, this special as well. She can literally combo off basically everything that's special cancelable. Um, that's just how a level three works. The Feng Shui engine. Yeah, this, this Super is kind of cracked. It's really good, it's situational. Because if you use this, you cannot use your level 3. But you can use your level 1 off your combo, and I'll show you that. But the Feng Shui Engine is an install super. You pop it, and it changes your combo routes. As you can see here, I'll do neutral heavy kick into crouching heavy kick. Or crouching heavy punch, should I say. Now, there's a reason why I finished that with crouching heavy punch. And I'll show you that in a second. But for now, basically, it allows you to press and, and, and cancel normals into other normals that you otherwise couldn't. So as you can see, that combo is definitely never possible with Judy in a normal state. I can't put those buttons together. I don't know what all the combinations are, I have not been studious in that sense. But as you can see, you can do crouching medium punch into standing medium kick, or crouching medium punch into the overhead, but as you see, it changes the effect of the move. It knocks the actual person on the floor, or your opponent on the floor. And as is the case with this, if you, if you link the heavier buttons together, instead of them just remaining on the floor, they will actually get knocked down. So, as I said, there's a reason why I use crouching medium kick, or crouching heavy kick, crouching heavy punch. And because you can jump cancel, providing you're in the level two install, you can jump cancel crouching uh, heavy punch, which allows you to get some air combos. And from there, essentially, what I've discovered anyway, you're looking for two hits and into EX Shikisen. I tend to do like um, neutral, neutral, neutral medium punch into neutral medium kick in the air, and that tends to work for me. So I'll just do a combo now. 
And from here you can level one super. Again, if you time it there, you can land all the hits. But yes, this super allows you to change your combo routes that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do. But rule of thumb whenever you're in it, whatever you end in, especially on hit, of course, you know, if you're just posturing on block, it's fine. But if you if you get the hit, you need to be able to cancel into, cancel into um, crouching the heavy punch as your second move. Because if it's your first, it will not give you that, not that effect. None of the other buttons are jump cancelable like that. So you need to finish with that button. You have, again, you can also pop it on hit and then go back into a combo. The combo that I found universally that works at any range that you land this in is neutral heavy kick into neutral heavy punch, or crouching heavy punch. And then from there, the um, neutral, neutral medium punch to neutral medium kick in the air. Some buttons will whiff if you land this at max range, like um, back heavy kick. It landed there, but see if we can get it to whiff. There you go, it whiffed, the first hit whiffed. But what I found is guaranteed at any range is this combo here that I'm showing you. So thanks for engine, when you pop this, you're literally going in. You're gambling that you're going to win the round. Again, you want to do it on hit really, but you're gambling that you're going to win the round. When you pop Feng Shui, be noted that most of these are frame tie as far as I'm aware. I've not lapped every single one of them, as you can see that one's not. The uh, crouching medium, the neutral medium punch into forward medium kick for the overhead, that's not frame tied. But mostly everything is frame tight and you will not get punished for doing this there's nothing that we can press so if I get counter I don't know drive impact or something where is it I'm not gonna get drive impacted for this you can't interrupt same with this example here I could probably do the full thing into the sweep. He still can't punish me. So yeah, it gives you longer block strings, more pressure, and big fat combos. It really is your, your gambit. And before I forget, you can also combo off Shikasen. If I time it right. And you can also combo off the forward DP motion, though I literally can never do this in a game. I'm not that quick. You can combo off that special as well. Like I said, you can combo this off basically everything. And with all that, I think that brings my first guide and first longer form commentary style video to an end. I hope that amongst my incoherent ramblings and poor cuts and fucking stuttering <laughs> and mispronouncing things or just straight up fucking misremembering things I hope that anywhere within these ramblings anyone looking to play Jury looking to see what Jury players are going for and help them when they play against Jury just anyone in general has found this video at least a little bit helpful I do feel like there's some you know little bits of information here that I've put in that can be definitely helpful for a player what I've got to improve on is how I articulate that in the future but in the future there will definitely be more videos like this um, whether it be about fighting games whether it be about Street Fighter 6 or whether it be about other things I definitely want to make more commentary style videos whether it be analysis, critique, explanation, whatever it is on a multitude of different things and most other things as well as I've waffled about on stream a billion times but leave a like if you enjoyed this guide if it's helped you comment as well if it's helped you it'd be awesome to know um, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this and streams or stream this game and fighting games in general regularly if uh, anyone saw Summer Games Fest a couple hours ago the MK1 trailer looked insane we're definitely going to be playing that on this channel but um, I hope this scrubs guide to playing a uh, Judy has helped uh, and before I sign off I've got to say a massive thank you to everybody who supported me as Tanuki so far, coming onto the streams, vibing, joining, joining the Discord, playing me on the fighting games that we've been playing, 
vibing, good times only. I wouldn't be here without any of you guys. This video, as scuffed as it is, is purely, well, it's, it's an amalgamation of two things. My work ethic and drive and want to improve and your guys' support. And there's absolutely no doubt that your guys' support helps fuel that work ethic and that drive. So whatever happens to this video, whatever happens to Tanuki, you guys are the ones to thank. You're all fucking legends, and I hope you have a great, great day, great night, whatever time it is for you. Peace.